Today we have our presenter, Steve Kramer from Newbridge, and he's the Senior VP of Operations at Newbridge Business Solutions. He also serves on a number of boards for various different entities, um, and we're excited to have him with us to talk about some customer service. So, Steve, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and turn the time over to you. Perfect. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate it. So they had different groups of individuals that focused on just chat, um, on uh, social media, and then also different platforms like Yelp and Google and things, but also through voice. And so the channels that are out there that, that are available for customers to interact, you know, good, bad, or ugly, you're looking at your social media channels, you're looking at SMS, uh, which is your text coming in from your phone directly into a platform. Uh, you're looking at chat bots, which are, you know, what most companies, a lot of companies have on their websites. When you go to the website, a bot pops up and has an individual usually says, how can I help you? And then you have voice, where someone actually calls your phone number and speaks to you. You have an IDR in there for self-service, <clears throat> which is also an aspect of it. But these are the different channels by which you interact with your client. Well, you have to have people that understand that model and understand and don't depend on those, uh, those channels solely to uh, accomplish all the activity uh, that a customer may need for them to be successful. So with that being said, now you have a group of people who have gone through the training on how to properly communicate. They have the skills, whether they had it when they came to you or not, now they have it. And then you train them on how to communicate on these different channels so they understand how to communicate in these different channels effectively to and meet the needs of the client. Each one of these channels is a different type of communication style. Um, and they're different. You know, a live chat is different than an email response, right? Uh, social media is very different than email and chat. So skill uh, determination, uh, demonstration. And we went down to the process of the different channels that are available to communicate with your clients. And so how do you do that? So, you know, you have to be able to communicate with your different uh, client bases that communicate through different channels. You want to use different products and services. This goes back to the three-legged stool conversation, full processes and technology. And so within the people and processes of technology, um, we talk, spoke about people and how to determine the required skill sets train and develop those people to meet the needs of the clients that you have, and then also be in the situation where how do you effectively uh, communicate with these people through the different channels that they prefer, well then you have to have a, a technology that enables them to do that. And so in many cases, organizations use what they call omni-channel platforms, and this is a platform where agents have, or individuals, have the ability to uh, interact with these different channels all from one platform. So it identifies, it pulls in from the CRM, whether you use like a Salesforce or a Zendesk or uh, um, a Zoho CRM, which is a product of Google, um, Google Al Alphabet. And so you have your client base, but then you're able to determine, you know, and understand who you're speaking with because you have that documentation of the history of that client. And so going back to the, the client that is a pizza client in, in my company, uh, they have a CRM that they manage their clients from. And then they also have a system that's an omnichannel so they can communicate through all the different ways that their customers feel comfortable communicating with different channels. So with that being the case, what ends up happening is you're in a situation where you have the right people, you have the right processes, and then you also have then the right technology to enable to interact with those individuals. So what does that then do? It gives you the ability to have um, a customer satisfaction model um, so that you can then determine the customer satisfaction mapping process, which is your model, to then train your individuals um, on how customers like to be interacted with and how they like to communicate. But then subsequently, uh, then you, the product training would result from that. So usually what happens with companies, they do it actually the opposite. They want to train someone on a product, and then they want to help people understand the customer satisfaction process, and then they want to do um, training. And so but what that does to somebody, it, it pre-cans them into a product uh, a model, if you will, of training and development that doesn't look at what the customer is really looking for 
from that product and from the individuals within the organization. It's actually backwards. So if you teach someone, for example, say you're a door manufacturer, uh, you want to teach you know new individuals coming into your organization on how doors are built, the process, et cetera. But it might be better to start with the customer satisfaction mapping process first as far as what is the expectation of a customer uh, today, tomorrow, and the next five years. Uh, because then that will give those individuals the perspective that when they go into the product training and the customer support training, what a customer is really looking for from that organization, short-term, mid-term, and long-term. And this is where organizations become short-sighted because they train on how we do things today, uh, and that's all those people know. And then they never get redeveloped or continue education, continuing education to understand you know, what the client needs are because they don't have a customer satisfaction uh, mapping process. And so with that being the case, what you're looking for is you're looking for the individuals in your organization to understand the operations side of the house, the customer service side of the house, the sales side of the house, and then the accounts receivables, which is their bills. People pay their bills because they owe a bill, but they also pay their bill because they like the service, they like the product, and they like the relationship that they have with the vendor that they're doing business with. So with that being the case, that mapping process enables an organization to really understand how to map the conversation. This is an example of an IDR and a customer service um, call flow, for example, for chat, um, IDR, as well as social media. And so this, these are the call flows by which clients expect, ex, uh, have expectations of communication. And that expectation of communication enables them to be, have the satisfaction level that they need with um, the, uh, the company uh, as a client. So then what you want to do from that, map, that, that process is you want to monitor and you want to map that. And that mapping process, like I mentioned before, is taking the metrics from all these different channels and from the relationships that you have with those clients uh, and map it to determine, once again, their short-term needs, their mid-term needs, and their long-term needs. And in that way, you'll be always ahead of the curve on customer expectations. And you don't want to depend on the sales organization to do that because that's technically not their job. You don't want to depend just on the operations department because that's a portion of their job. Um, and accounts receivable, which is accounting, that's really not their job either. You really need to have someone who is a customer-centric um, leader who is mapping these processes, working with all these different departments to ensure that these different, all the uh, information that these different departments have um, are then consolidated so that you have a mapping process to then be in a situation where you can have career path mapping, uh, which includes the customer experience mapping process, which includes customer service, sales, ops, IT, and um, accounts receivable, so that everyone is clear on the expectations. So a lot of companies, what they do is they do rotation modes, because so these different departments you understand. In my career at UPS and at Verizon, I did laterals, and so I didn't go straight up. I wanted to go across the organization, and I wanted to learn as much as I could from each one of these departments, which is extremely beneficial to me, and it actually uh, propelled my career uh, exponentially because it was a situation where I understood how the functions within these departments um, were accomplished, and as a result, I could be uh, more successful in my departments and my job because I understood how the big picture worked. So what that then gets into is in career development. And this is what these, these individuals are looking for, right? They want to have a mapping. They want to know a roadmap. Like, what if I develop myself, will I be successful? How can I be successful? Don't make it this gray process. Have a mentorship uh, program where mentors have discussions with you on a weekly basis as a newbie individual. Leadership development so that I can then be developed to have the skills that I don't have and I did not maybe uh, acquire from my prior opportunities, going back to hiring people that you didn't have before, uh, that didn't have experience before, those individuals need that leadership development. They need the mentorship. They need the career mapping so they understand how to be successful, which then goes into corporate culture. You're going to have a better co corporate culture because you're going to have happier people. They're going to be more focused because they know what to do.